back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the owners. Before we begin, let me know in the comments if you were looking forward to this or what your thoughts are if you've seen it already, and make sure to give this a thumbs up if you like these reviews. It helps me out immensely if you do that. Also, if you're new here and you like movies, whether it be blockbusters, hidden gems, or everything in between, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases and some classics. But now, let's jump right into it. This horror film stars Maisie Williams as Mary, who gets dragged into helping her boyfriend and his friends break into an elderly couple's home while they're out for the night and steal their cash from a safe. However, when the couple, played by Sylvester McCoy, and Rita Tushingham return early, the group's forced to hold them hostage. That is, until they find the tables beginning to turn. This is written and directed by Julius Berg, making his feature-length debut, and it's based on a French graphic novel from 2011. However, when I read the premise and saw the trailer, I immediately thought of the movie Don't Breathe from 2016. For those who aren't familiar with it, that is another horror film which also had the same basic premise of a group of friends breaking into an older person's house, only to find that he's not as helpless as he seems and the tables turned on them. The two films drastically deviate from one another beyond that same general idea, and while I'm not going to spend the rest of the video making comparisons, all I'll say is this film is nowhere near on the level of Don't Breathe. While I didn't exactly hate it, it failed to live up to its premise of being a fun cat and mouse B-movie. A lot of this is based around contrivances or huge suspension of disbelief in order to fully execute some of its ideas. I don't know if the graphic novel played out exactly the same as I haven't read it, but I found the story to be incredibly weak, mainly because outside of Maisie Williams, all of these characters are kind of terrible people and frankly, sort of get what they deserve. And that's due to the fact that they stay in this house way longer than they should have and open themselves up for the possibility of the couple walking in on them. And it's not even like if they just got out a minute or two earlier they would have avoided all this. They go into that house in the afternoon and it turns into nighttime while they're still in there and the couple returns. Maisie Williams doesn't even go in there with them at first. They use her car and she needs it back to go to work and she spends the first few minutes of the movie standing outside of the house screaming at them to hurry it up. But meanwhile two of them sit down to watch TV, they play around with some of the items in the house and they take their sweet time. Eventually Maisie Williams goes in after it turns the night, meaning she was probably staying there for hours I'd imagine, and she and her boyfriend waste even more time by hooking up on a table, and that's a sequence that gets dragged out for way too long. There's this understanding that this isn't supposed to be the brightest group of people around, and I understand they felt they may have had a little time to spare, so they didn't need to move that quickly. But they're in this house for a ridiculous amount of time. They were just asking for this to happen. And to be clear, I'm not saying these characters need to be punished because they just didn't think clearly, but they're mainly just these rude, almost obnoxious bunch of people. Maisie Williams is the only one with any sort of morality and tries talking some sense into them, but the boyfriend and the other two guys are cold, kind of distant, and often insult her or each other. They really kind of don't care about one another. One of them is the cliche too ruthless guy of the group where he's willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done and has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. But honestly, there's really nothing about any of them that makes them sympathetic other than her. There will be moments later on, almost when it's too little too late, where it tries to give them some sort of character development. Like there'll be a few lines here and there about how one of them used to date Maisie Williams' sister and he wasn't such a good guy, so the relationship ended. But it'll be later on in the movie and the way it's said, it almost feels like an afterthought. The characters will be in the middle of a situation situation that's supposed to be suspenseful and it just feels tacked on. It's like, oh wait, we're supposed to give them some sort of personality and just squeeze in a few lines so they didn't seem one dimensional. Because they add absolutely nothing to the story. You could have cut them out altogether and you would have gotten the same effect. They didn't change how I felt about the characters. And while I don't want characters to be one dimensional in any movie, in this particular instance, I think I would have appreciated had they not included any of these half-assed moments. Because it feels jarring when characters are fearing for their lives and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's, this is why my sister left you. And then back to our regularly scheduled programming. It just takes you out of the moment. However, the movie is at its best in the 20 to 30 minutes or so when the couple initially returns and the group has the upper hand on them. I legitimately enjoyed this part of the movie. Again, there are some things built around coincidence in order to fully make it work, but for the most part, it does a great job of building suspense. As I mentioned, there's this one guy who's the most cold-hearted of the group and he really begins taking charge and the infighting among the group starts getting really ugly and you get a little interested because you're going back and forth from this one guy setting his sights on the older couple and then setting his sights on the rest of the group. This is the one time I thought the film did a good job of balancing two different things going on. Both were equally suspenseful and while there are some cliched moments, the tension was there, especially thanks to a solid job by all the actors. In fact, the acting is probably this movie's strongest element. It didn't save it by any means, but everyone did an okay job with the material they were given. I've liked Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones and it was nice to see her in something a little different. As the moral center of the group, I think she made a compelling lead. And Sylvester McCoy and Rita Tushing 
Buckingham are both pretty good as the older couple. They're supposed to regularly give off this seemingly friendly but secretly sinister vibe to them, and I think they succeeded in showing this warmth that masks their true intentions. However, it's when the tables are turned on this group and the older couple has the upper hand where this quickly fell apart for me. A lot of it just didn't work. Without spoiling anything, in case you want to see this, I will say that again, a lot of it is based around convenience and a lot of suspension of disbelief. Characters let their guard down a little too easily, and the way that the older couple gets the upper hand, it's almost as if control was willingly handed over to them. The film also has instances where characters drastically shift personalities, and they'll sometimes act out a character for a moment where the script needs it to happen. This is where some of the random attempts at character development really play in. There will especially be these few instances where it seems the wife may have dementia, she seems to forget where she is, and she'll say these ludicrous things, and the husband's aware she's not in her right state of mind, but he seems to purposely base some of his decisions on asking her things while she's unaware of who she's talking about, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. There were some interesting scenarios set up, but the more this film progressed and the more it based situations around conveniences, sporadic personality shifts, and a major suspension of disbelief, the more it started to lose me. It's also funny, they included so many moments of attempted character building that had no bearing on anything, yet we ended up not learning much about the older couple. Because they're not people who are acting strictly in self-defense, the idea is that there's much more to them than they let on. And we get some hints here and there, but their motivations seemed extremely unclear, and it was more as if they did things for the sake of just torturing people. In a way, they were kind of one-dimensional. There are a couple of interesting things about them here and there that we see, but the movie never elaborates on them, and we're kind of left hanging as to what those were all about. Also, from a technical standpoint, it's fine for the most part, but there's one point in the third act where, for no reason whatsoever, the aspect ratio changes, and despite this being where the movie is at its most action-packed, we're forced to view most of the action through this tiny box. I truly don't know what the reasoning behind this was. If it was supposed to give a sense of claustrophobia, it failed tremendously. Because we have a difficult time seeing what's happening, and the way this tries to leave the audience disoriented is more frustrating than anything. There seemed like there was no rhyme or reason to it. And it goes on for like almost the entire third act, but it really just adds nothing. It's honestly a bizarre stylistic choice that doesn't go with the rest of the film and just made it a very jarring experience. Overall, I don't hate this movie, but I definitely didn't like it. The acting is good, there's a solid 30 minutes or so where it's legitimately engaging and interesting, and it does have some moments where it builds up suspense and felt scary. However, it's horrible half-hearted attempts at character development, it's weird aspect ratio shift in the third act, and it's building of so many scenarios around contrivances that bend the rules where the screenplay called for it made it a very unsatisfying experience. This is an easy skip. The Owners gets a 5 out of 10. So let me know, did you see The Owners, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Did you think it was scary? Did you read the graphic novel? And what's your favorite movie taking place in one location? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it, and for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll catch you next time.